Workaday ever pondered on the term seaworthiness? It's a term that carries a lot of weight in maritime circles. In its most basic definition, seaworthiness refers to the ability of a ship to withstand the rigors of the sea, be it weather, waves, or other maritime conditions. But it's not as simple as just being able to stay afloat. Seaworthiness is a broader concept. It's about the ship being fit for its intended voyage. This includes having the right equipment and being in a condition that allows it to safely carry its cargo, crew, and passengers. A seaworthy ship is one that's properly maintained, equipped, and manned to tackle the challenges of its journey. It's not just about the ship's physical state, but also about the skills of the crew, the suitability of the cargo, and the planned route. Seaworthiness, mates, is not just about floating. It's about fulfilling a ship's purpose safely and efficiently. Now, let's delve into the legal aspects of seaworthiness. In the maritime world, seaworthiness isn't merely a term to describe a ship's fitness for sea. It's a legal obligation. The law expects ship owners to ensure that their vessels are in a condition to safely withstand the perils of the sea and reach their destination without incident. This obligation isn't limited to just the physical condition of the ship. It extends to the ship's crew as well. They must be competent, adequately trained, and the ship must be properly manned. The ship's equipment, including life-saving and firefighting gear, must be in good working order. And of course, the ship must be loaded correctly and safely. The ship's seaworthiness is not just assessed at the start of the voyage, it's a continuous obligation, meaning ship owners must constantly ensure their vessel remains seaworthy throughout the journey. Now, you might be wondering, what happens if a ship owner fails to meet this obligation? Well, the repercussions can be quite severe. If a ship is found to be unseaworthy, the ship owner may be held liable for any damages or losses that occur as a result. This could include compensation for lost cargo, costs for rescue operations, or damages for environmental harm if, for instance, the ship were to leak oil. It's important to note that the law treats seaworthiness very seriously. It's not just about avoiding financial liability. Ensuring a ship's seaworthiness is about protecting the lives of those on board, safeguarding the cargo, and preserving the marine environment. In essence, maintaining seaworthiness is a shared responsibility. Everyone, from the ship owner to the crew, has a part to play in ensuring a ship can safely navigate the seas. So, whether you're a seasoned sailor or a maritime professional, Understanding and respecting the concept of seaworthiness is crucial, because when it comes to the sea, safety should always be the priority. Remember, in the eyes of the law, the sea is no place for a ship that's not up to scratch. A ship that's not seaworthy can also land you in hot water with criminal liability. Now let's talk about how this works. When a maritime accident occurs due to a ship's unseaworthiness, and it's clear that negligence played a part, the responsible parties could face criminal charges. This isn't just about a few dents and scratches. We're talking about serious issues that could endanger lives and the environment. It's about the duty of care that ship owners and operators have towards their crew, passengers, and the sea itself. If a ship is found to be unseaworthy and this condition leads to an accident, it's not just a civil matter. It can become a criminal one especially if there's evidence of disregard for safety standards or negligent maintenance. This is why seaworthiness isn't just important. It's crucial. So, keep your ship in tip-top shape, or you might end up in a legal storm. Seaworthiness is also a key factor in marine insurance. Just like you wouldn't insure a car with faulty brakes, insurance companies need to know that a ship is seaworthy before they'll cover it. It's all about assessing and managing risk. Now this doesn't mean the ship needs to be brand new or state of the art. Seaworthiness is about whether the vessel is suitable for its intended voyage, taking into account factors like the ship's condition, the crew's competence, and the type of cargo it will carry. Yet, unseaworthiness can lead to the denial of insurance claims. If an incident occurs and the ship is found unseaworthy, the insurance company may refuse to pay out. It's a bit like claiming for a car accident when you knew the brakes were faulty. With insurance, it's simple. No seaworthiness, no coverage. When it comes to the carriage of goods by sea, seaworthiness is crucial. This isn't just about the ship's physical condition, but extends to the competence of the crew, the adequacy of equipment, 
and even the accuracy of cargo descriptions. Imagine the chaos if a ship ill-equipped for its voyage takes on a storm. The cargo on board could be damaged or worse, lost entirely. This is why seaworthiness plays such a pivotal role in the maritime industry. It's all about ensuring the safe and efficient transport of goods across the world's oceans. Unseaworthiness, on the other hand, can lead to a multitude of problems. It's not just about the potential loss or damage of cargo, but it can also lead to legal complications, insurance disputes, and significant financial losses. So, when we talk about the carriage of goods by sea, it's important to remember this. For the safe carriage of goods, seaworthiness is a must. In chartering and shipbuilding contracts, seaworthiness plays a pivotal role. Indeed, these two sectors of the maritime industry demand a high degree of seaworthiness to ensure the ship can perform its intended functions. Charterers, those who hire ships for a specified period or voyage, need assurances that the vessel is fit for its purpose. They need to know that the ship can safely carry the cargo, whether it's grain, oil, or shipping containers full of goods, from one port to another without risking the cargo, crew, or environment. Similarly, in shipbuilding contracts, seaworthiness is a fundamental requirement. When a shipbuilder undertakes to construct a vessel, they are essentially promising to deliver a seaworthy ship. This means that the vessel, once completed, should be in a condition to navigate the seas safely. It should be structurally sound, have adequate machinery and equipment, and be fit for the specific purpose for which it was built. Now let's imagine a scenario where a ship, chartered or newly built, turns out to be unseaworthy. What happens then? Well, unseaworthiness can lead to breaches of contract. For charterers, an unseaworthy ship might mean delays in delivery of cargo, loss or damage to the cargo, or even potential legal liabilities. For shipbuilders, delivering an unseaworthy ship could lead to claims for breach of contract, delays in delivery, and hefty financial penalties. In both cases, the consequences of unseaworthiness can be severe. It could damage the reputation of the charterer or the shipbuilder, leading to a loss of trust and future business opportunities. Therefore, it's in their best interest to ensure that the ships they charter or build are seaworthy. So, you see, the concept of seaworthiness extends beyond just the physical condition of the ship. It affects the entire contractual chain in the maritime industry, from the shipbuilder to the charterer, and even the end consumer who is waiting for the cargo. In contracts, a seaworthy ship is worth its weight in gold. Finally, let's touch on seakeeping. It's not a term you hear every day, unless you're a maritime professional, but it plays a crucial role in the realm of seaworthiness. So what exactly is seakeeping? It's the ability of a ship to operate effectively in various sea conditions. That's right, mates. It's not just about how well a ship is built, but also how it handles the unpredictable nature of the sea. You see, the sea can be a volatile and unforgiving place, with waves that can rise as high as skyscrapers, and the winds that can whip up a storm in an instant. And amidst these tumultuous conditions, a ship needs to be able to stay its course, remain stable, and ensure the safety of its crew, passengers, and cargo. That's where seakeeping comes in. Seakeeping takes into account factors such as the ship's design, its hull form, the weight distribution, and the installed power, among others. These elements determine how a ship responds to waves and other sea conditions. For instance, a ship with a well-designed hull and optimal weight distribution will be more stable, reducing the risk of capsizing. Similarly, a ship with ample installed power can maintain its speed and course even in heavy seas. Now why is seakeeping so crucial to seaworthiness? Well, a ship that can't handle the sea's challenges is hardly seaworthy, is it? A seaworthy vessel must be able to withstand the rigors of the sea, keeping its crew and cargo safe and secure. Seakeeping ensures that a ship is not just fit on paper, but also in practice, when it's out there navigating the vast expanses of the ocean. So, mates, seaworthiness isn't just about the ship, it's about the sea itself. Keep that in mind, and you'll navigate your maritime journeys with confidence.